Hey everyone, welcome to Saturday Night Popcorn. This is Jason. And this is Kai, and we have another great discussion for you today. Uh, the movie of the day is The Red Circle. I don't, it's a French film, so I don't want to butcher the film's title in French, <laughs> <laughs> but it's from 1970, so it's not very new. I still want to give everyone a spoiler warning. But, but like you said, Amazon has it as 2003. I'm assuming that's when the English subtitles came out. That's that was my guess too, right? Because that threw me off. Like looking on IMDb and looking online, it says 1970, but then going on Amazon, like that's where both of us watched it. Mm-hmm. It says 2003, which will definitely throw you off. I was saying because uh, watching some of the driving scenes, you're like, this is from 2003. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that an old James like, Bond movie mm. where it's like all oh, like like things are going by all the time. <laughs> but the background's still consistent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this is a, it was, it's another French, like, like, I want to say like action, well, I guess sort of, right? Which is, yeah, yeah, I would say action. action to it. Yeah, it's like uh, action thriller. Thriller, it's a heist movie. Yeah. But it doesn't get to the heist until the very end where you're like, yeah. okay, this is where like, this is kind of like building up to. Um, Did it feel so, I know off camera and off the recording i told you like hey this is two and a half hours did it feel like that to you i it's difficult because like i paused it at one point because mm-hmm. that when you said it was like two and a half hours we, we started it kind of early yesterday and so yeah. when i paused it i was like oh man like we're only like halfway through and i feel like we've like <laughs> just rode a train and yeah. <laughs> ran through the the french wilderness and stuff uh but then once it kind of ended i was like that's not bad like it, what i guess it was because i, I enjoyed the ending and stuff mm-hmm. and the culmination of the ending and i think that kind of like was was fine for all the build-up that it kind of had going on yeah. but i'm assuming other people would definitely feel all two hours and like 30 minutes yeah uh, is it, it's a lot of reading too well, actually not sorry no, it was sort of, minimal yeah. dialogue yeah yeah and i think that's a positive to me where it's like a, mm-hmm. those like moments of like silence and and tension i don't know about tension but like it's just like you're kind of building this atmosphere while like they're all yeah. walking around and kind of doing their <laughs> thing and stuff and that Going was to people's point. houses <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know did you feel it like did you like like oh this is like a long movie there were there were moments where it felt like okay what's going on but overall like once like you said like once it was done i was like okay that wasn't that wasn't too bad for a two hour two and a half hour film yeah Yeah, it kept my attention yeah it kept my attention i think so like just one point like i turned around to patty and i was saying something she was like falling asleep and i was like and then she grabbed she she had to go grab something to like nibble on and everything and i was like all right well that that's probably like a clear representation of like what someone that's like maybe not totally into this movie would be like yeah all right it's kind of dragging Get along, fidgety and, <laughs> yeah. yeah i need someone to munch on just to keep me awake <laughs> there were some off the wall things that happened in this film too like the train scene how do, so how do you kick a window out of a moving train and then jump off the train and then you jump off. <laughs> <laughs> and then run through the French wilderness. And then somehow the French police are able to catch up with you, even though you have like a 30 minute to an hour head start. That's what Patty said. She was like, "Is he? what did he do? <laughs> like, I was yeah, like, it was like he was a nap. <laughs> hiding behind a tree for 30 minutes. And he's like, oh, they're closed. Let me run now. Like, what? And also, we really didn't understand what he did to like. Yeah, they had, don't like, touch on that. Yeah, the whole French police force coming after him. <laughs> yep. They had that man handcuffed in the train, all of that. And then, yeah, the whole French police force chasing him. And it's like, but well, what did this man actually do? I was more surprised, too, when uh, when the police officer, like, pulled that, like, lever inside of the, the train car. Mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't know you can do that. And I, I wanted to look that up. That was, like, a thing that, like, like their fire alarm, like, did it stop the train, like, totally? <laughs> like, that has to be something from back then. There's no way you can get away with that now. I know, right? Like, <laughs> I think they only have those on, like, light train, uh, light rails and munis. And that's for, like, the next stop. Like, hey, I'm going to stop here. You can't yeah, put a right? halt to the entire thing. Does it take forever to, like, stop a train <laughs> or yeah. stop one of those? 
I don't know. Yeah, there are some like off the wall moments where it's like uh, the 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 moment that kind of stands out to me was the the kind of drunk but their marksman guy that like was having like these hallucinations of like oh, spiders yeah. and all this stuff. I was like, I couldn't take it with all the spider stuff, but <laughs> but then I was like, does he like? But then he doesn't drink anything. Like he cleaned up pretty nice once he mm-hmm. went, went to the meeting. He knew his his stuff that he was gonna go and do this thing and everything, and he was gonna practice just to make sure. So I was like, "Does he just have bouts of like, all right, I'm just gonna like get totally wasted and then like, binge it?" Once he's like, I guess he's like one of those people that like needs something to do, and then mm. there's nothing there, then it's like, all right, life's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, he needs that thrill. Yeah. Even the um, when they were doing the robbery, so somehow they got into the the jewelry store they harm the security guard and then they damn near just walk through the laser beams to get into the jewelry <laughs> that yeah that blew i was my thinking mind. like is that where like all these like <laughs> like um i i don't know if it was like is it a movie with uh catherine Oceans. jones yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, catherine like, jones does like, it going through like all the lasers i was like yep. kind of like it it, it like that totally made me think that of that scene where someone could be watching this movie a long time ago and it's like oh like like i guess like security can like up itself and everything have lasers and all this stuff and they make fun of that in uh, workaholics they have a whole song for it do they <laughs> yeah they have a whole song for Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> but they do that in that i forgot the name of that film but they do it in that and then oceans 12 12 12 or 13 13 actually ocean 13 our uh our guy vins from lahane he's actually the one that's ducking between lasers oh crazy <laughs> yeah or dancing he's actually dancing with the lasers uh, i gotta i gotta watch those movies i think i've seen the first one and like never oh, went back i to love those one. 12 is awful <laughs> but 13 one, uh, 11 and 13 11 and 13. amazing yeah but 12 is a lot of drama i think for me like the biggest like positive was like like I said, the end and everything, the 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 heist itself. Like yeah. when when the when what was it? I think they like did something. I don't know if it was like after the guy shot that little like keyhole mm-hmm. and like they like the camera like cut to like each of the things turning off. And I was like that was like perfect and, and like, cool. oh each of the, the little like cabinets like turning off so then mm-hmm. they could open them. I was like, that was like, that was amazing. And then just kind of like the whole aspect of the guy, I was confused as to like why the guy with the gun was going to like, why he walked up all the way up to the top and then took off his shoes and then walked back down and stuff. And Patty was like, oh, maybe he's like trying to distract the people up up there, but he's, but he's going to go back to like the, the floor below him and stuff. So that was a good, that was really enjoyable just to see and and it was like a lot of like build up to that. It was a lot yeah. of like, like here, here's the plan. Here's they they meet the guy that's gonna go like sell the jewelry afterwards and stuff. And then there's like this this whole thing that kind of like uh, crescendos from that. Um, but I think that was like the biggest positive, where it's yeah. it was the culmination of everything that you saw in this movie it kind of came to there. And you, I guess, I'm... you get the explanation of the red circle, right? Like the whole like enter like the beginning of like what for that that Buddha thing, mm-hmm. where it's like it's like these random events or like these events kind of bring these certain people together at, yeah. at a at a situation. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. that yeah, makes, so that I was like, I was like, I don't know sense. why they're doing that at the beginning. I was like, yeah. and at the, that beginning portion where that thing was like spinning, I was like, it totally reminded me of like Resident Evil, like the old <laughs> video games. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for a zombie to pop out yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> i i like the way it was shot like and in my notes i have um so i watched this youtube video about alfred hitchcock and the way he filmed and how he would utilize different framing sizes in order to like point out something within the film oh. and it seemed like they used that in this like they would go from a wide to see the surroundings of said person and then they would slowly move in to a close up of whatever it may be. I don't know if I have 
uh, I don't have like an actual item for whatever reason, but they did that a handful of times where they, they have a wide of like a party scene or whatever. And then they hone in on one singular item. And I was like, Oh, okay. I guess they got that from Hitchcock or Hitchcock might've got it from them, whatever. Yeah. And then, um, what's another one? The, Oh, when they were in, I forgot the guy's name, but they were in a, in someone's house. I think it was the jeweler's house or the guy that was going to give him the jewelry. They're in his house and he had a spiral staircase. Uh-huh. And they had a scene where Corey was downstairs looking up at him through the spiral staircase. I really like that shot. Yeah, I, I like that one too. And there was like a shot where like there's a mirror too, where it was like right after he walked up the staircase. Yeah. That is true. I didn't really, I, I, I guess I wasn't really paying attention to that because I was like, I was trying to read. I was like, what, what's going on? Like, what, like trying to like, like hear the story. But I guess I can distract you from like the shots itself because yeah, like, I think it's true. Where like it, it pinpoints what the audience or the viewer mm-hmm. should Needs pay attention on. to. Yeah, because they're also telling the story that's gonna kind of like come to the end and everything. But interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I I I had one call. Pat, Patty was like, Patty was like, you better write that down. What when the <laughs> what when they're going to do the. Uh, the jewelry heist, and the mm-hmm. the dude touches the boob on the on the. Oh statue. yeah, <laughs> that, that, like, that is everyone's like thing. So like, unnecessary. Like, touch the boob for good luck. For good luck, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't do a Buddha belly, so we had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the so you were talking about the ending. So I like the bank heist portion of the ending, but like the final ending when they're trying to run away mm-hmm. and they get blasted i wasn't really a fan of that really yeah like i felt bad like i even have <laughs> i have it on here i said uh cory took more bullets than 50 cent <laughs> <laughs> yeah really right but i i, I probably would have liked it and granted it's like the the nicer ending of, of mm-hmm. a movie like this um it probably would have been better that he kind of gets away yeah and then, and then it's like it's or it's just like it ends on him just running down the field and then you kind of cut to black and yeah. then you're like well we don't know like, i think what kind happened? of ending it with him dying or all of them dying it's like well okay yeah like it it just kind of justifies what the, the police captain or whatever they, they call them yeah like every person is capable of bad things and stuff and I guess it just finalizes the story where it's like, okay. It gives it you an, you an actual like, end. Yeah. There was no interpretation for like, oh, well, what happened? It was just like, oh, yeah, no, they all died. Like, that's it. I wonder if like the, the director's like, yeah, no, you, you do something bad, you have to, <laughs> you have to pay for it. <laughs> You're all going to die. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bank heist was good, but yeah, that portion, I was like, yeah, a little bit of a cop out. But it was funny because it's like, because like once you kind of understood like where the story was going and like and then the that detective pops up as like the 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 jewelry like professional and stuff and Patty was like oh that's that guy right <laughs> like, <isn't> that him? <laughs> <laughs> and and it was like okay well I guess it's like I kept like like replaying that like entrance where it's like like people come to a certain point and that's like the red mm-hmm. circle. So I was like, I, I'm like trying to like, I was trying to remind myself of that. And I'm like, okay, like, I, I think these like series of events are going to bring them all together. And yeah. eventually they're all in the same room together. Yeah. Uh, when he's like, when he's like talking about the jewelry and stuff. And, but I didn't get, I didn't get the point where he said, if, if he knew who you were, you would, he would not have ran or something, or he would have stayed. So did, would he have given up? That yeah, that doesn't make that actually didn't make sense because like if I know you're a police officer, I'm gonna for sure not either either not show up or run away, so I don't get yeah, caught. Right, like he has like millions of dollars of yeah millions of francs, I think in in France worth the jewelry, the jewelry, and a cop is looking at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was confused by that, but and then they all run, and then that's where it kind of ends. Then, like, they all, then they all die. And they all died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is that the biggest negative that, that you have on your hand? 
Uh, yeah, like mine was was the robbery scene or the not the robbery scene, the heist, the beginning of the heist, like them knocking out the security guards so easily and then dipping between lasers like they're Catherine Zip Jones. <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, I, I was confused. Or like, like you're watching the security guard, and he's like, he's like, has this hunch that something is going on, or mm-hmm. like, and he's like, you can tell he's kind of like, do I check? And I was talking to Pat. I was like, that's literally your job. Your job yes. is to like act on your own hunch and then go yes. and figure it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> like normal people not doing your job can be laying in bed and be like, oh, I hear something, but I'm just gonna fall asleep and forget about mm-hmm. it. No, you were there. Like <laughs> you have a weapon, sir. Like go figure it out. And he did nothing except yeah. for get beat down real quick. And then, and then when he's laying on the cot, he's all tied up, and he's trying to touch the button with his nose. <laughs> and I was like, he could have, like, I don't know, someone got his Use foot, a foot up there. Yeah, <laughs> like his or shoulder. like wiggle. Yeah, there were so many other ways. But, Use my nose. Like okay. Yeah. The face masks were terrible too. Well, it just reminds you of like the early pandemic where like everyone yeah. was trying. To just, like... <laughs> just using the sock, just put a sock over your face. It's like next time we, we have something, I'm just gonna we, we all walk around with those things. <laughs> <laughs> but those, but were, I guess yeah, those it works, right? Yeah, they got, they got yeah. through it. They got through it. They looked at the the video camera and everything. It was funny to see like how things like. Like if that was a real representation of like what security looked like back then, yeah. Where like I, I get the whole thing where like these you can create mechanisms to lock them, but like all these cameras and everything, like did they really like take all that time? I'm assuming if you have millions of dollars of of stuff, and sure, really, yeah. Like, take the time to set up all this stuff and everything just to make sure um, it's all safe every night. But how terrible were those cameras? It was the 70s. Cameras now still look bad. Security cameras look bad. So I can only imagine what they they were dealing with little Lego pieces. Yes, yeah, looking at like little <laughs> grains of like. Yeah, like, uh, is that a dog or is that yeah. a human? Mm. So like, I guess it's Bob. I don't know. We, we'll Let me go <laughs> check it out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes, uh, I don't know. I, I see this as, as like a a good heist movie mm-hmm. but it's possibly a little bit too drawn out too long yeah um, yeah where you have movies like a thief comes to mind where mm-hmm. i feel like there's a purpose for everything where like they, they kind of go through their plan they're doing all this stuff they meet the guy that's like the main guy like he's gonna give them all the jobs and everything the good jobs and, and all this stuff this I get the point, and I guess like we, we kind of talk about it a lot, where it's like these older movies, it almost seemed like they tried to make people's money worth it. Yeah. So, and you're, you're going to a movie for this epic of like, you have this continuous story that kind of wraps up into a clean bow at the end, where they all die. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, you almost get everyone's kind of money's worth while, while you're watching the movie. Yeah. Where I think nowadays, I think modern kind of filmmakers understand that, like, not everything needs to be like a, at a Tarantino level where, like, you're providing so much background on all this stuff. And granted, this is not even at a Tarantino level. There's like no background of all these individuals. You're just yeah. kind of creating the story in your own head. Like, little to no talking, also. Yeah, there's a lot of moments of silence. There's a mm. lot of moments of just like, like you're just, just watching, watching someone. Yeah. yeah where that can be a negative that can be a big negative where it's mm-hmm. like you, you're almost like all right well what else like what's going on and stuff and yeah like, it almost feels like, like there was there. a part one that you missed because right? there's so little information provided because you don't know anything about the guy that's running away from the cops it's like yeah. why like all right like is he a murderer is he like like what did uh, he like they do? say he's not a terrorist so then and what is he like is yeah. he like a height? Like does he know how to do ice and stuff? Is he like that level or something? And and just so that they like and Patty was like like oh they work pretty well for uh, together when they have they just barely met each other. Yeah, <laughs> they were like okay. buddies. Like <laughs> he's just in your trunk and it's like oh yeah let's work together and do this. Like oh yeah. okay yeah 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 
I don't know. I think the length, it's it's weird. It's like that, like, I saw something that was like a crossroads of something. Like, you you, you want to watch these old, old epic movies, and it's like mm-hmm. either an hour and a half or like four hours. So yeah. Like you're, like, you're you're there for the entire afternoon, or you're like there for like a little bit, and you're watching another movie afterwards, probably. Yeah. So it's like one or the other. And so it's, it's hard to swallow that sometimes. We're like, even like you, like you warned, <laughs> warned I, me. It's like, hey, yeah, I gave you left hours. Up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was glad that I watched it and it wasn't dark after like I started watching it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you see the time change. <laughs> I don't know, but what what'd you end up giving it as a as a rating? Uh, I think I gave it a two nice and a half, two or two and a half. It was on my phone in the middle of this. It's uh, so bad. <laughs> totally prepared. Uh, no, I gave it a three. Okay, nice. I would give it a two and a half or three. Like I, yeah. I enjoyed the movie. There was some questionable situations that we talked about, <laughs> but overall, it was there was some action. There was some nonsense, but it still turned out to be a, a decent enough film. Yeah, I don't regret watching this. I, I ended up giving giving it a three and a half because mm. I think I understand this movie could be like could probably was a good movie back then. Yeah. Too. It's like almost like you like it's it's hard to watch these these things outside of a vacuum. Where it's like we have this this all this current knowledge of like fairly decent movies and stuff. Yeah. Um, but then it's like. When you go back to watch these, watch these old movies, it's nice to see where kind of things progressed, and and how kind of filmmakers and, and storytellers decided to kind of do their thing mm-hmm. with whatever way they could. Like there, there's a lot of mixture of like live action driving, but then you you when you get to like the, the close up shots of the people driving, then it's like. Like, like, little green screen or whatever then. yeah <laughs> yeah whatever they had back then uh so so it's like yeah you can do what you can with what you got yeah and um and uh, it's pretty interesting to to to, to watch as it kind of comes out and it's nice like you said like it's nice to see where films came from mm-hmm. since we've seen so many newer films it's nice to see like okay i still see filmmakers using that type of shot or that type of angle in their films now it's yeah, tried and true like you said like who who got it from who hitchcock or or they got it from like I mean, yeah you, know, like, you see these like these these people that use the same techniques and you're like all right like well you got it from people, somewhere yeah people are gonna do what looks good <laughs> yeah. like oh it worked for him let me try it out and i think yeah. they would have got it from hitchcock i think hitchcock was like 50s 60s yeah i think so right he was like, yeah but i think that's what made him so different where it's like he was like thinking crazy outside of the box mm-hmm. at the time that he was making movies too and he was doing silent that's... films first i think that's what they said helped him out the most yeah yeah and but this felt like a silent film it kind of did i think i think it like yeah because you can you can probably believe like half the movie like has has like no dialogue mm-hmm. and so like does it yeah did it still keep that kind of like background of a silent film as they kind of in- integrated some dialogue to it. So that's a couple words here and there, and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably back then, no one wanted to remember something, so it's like, just just tell me the line, and I'll say it, and then put it, put it later. <laughs> I'll get in the car, I'll drive, and I may yeah. say a word or two, and we're good. <laughs> we find out, like, Charlie Chaplin was the greatest silent film person because he never wanted to memorize it. <laughs> 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 it's like we had a hundred pages, but he said, "Nah, I got it." Yeah, like it's all silent now. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you, in terms of like our 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 theme of like French, kind of like crime, French, um, just French movies in general? It's kind of nice to watch these French movies. Yeah. Would you recommend this movie to to anybody? And then also, would you buy this for your personal movie collection? That's a great one. Uh, I don't think I would buy it for my collection. I'm excited for the next couple of films. I think those, just based off the uh, their the names, and- <laughs> yeah, 
and like the aura that's around that surrounds them. I think those are films I would add, and then Lahane for sure. But this one, no. Um, would I recommend it? I may recommend it, but it's the hey, it's a French film. Hey, it's two and a half hours. That's the only gripe. That's the only thing that that makes it tough. Yeah, I don't know. It's like my dad like my dad likes watching movies, and it's like, but I think nowadays it's kind of hard to sell people on like a two and a half hour movie, even like yeah. Avatar. Like people, people are like, oh, I know it's gonna be good or whatever, but it's like, do I really want to sit in a movie theater or like on my couch for that long? Yeah. And, and I think even like, Oppenheimer. It, Oppenheimer's three hours. Yeah. And and even I think I was at the movie theater where like everyone was like trying to figure out how they can go use the bathroom while well, yeah. Oppenheimer without missing everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't know. Like in terms of like recommending this to somebody, I I, I think uh, soon enough the the viewers of our podcast will kind of meet my brother and stuff. I think he would enjoy it. I think it, it's something that like you can kind of like I, I think have somebody to munch on and. Mm. But like, but I don't see my younger brother kind of watching this. I think yeah. he, like he can, I can see him watching more of the other movies that we've seen. Lahane, I think it's hard. It's hard. It was crazy that we started this whole mm-hmm. thing with just Lahane, and so you kind of have that as the the bar that That's you kind of set. Yeah. yeah. So it's like because like it's so modern and everything, and it and it and it still makes sense for today's world. And I yeah. think that's what what makes it easy. I was I was robbing jewelry stores. I, pe- people still do it, but like not at the, the at the level back then and stuff. I yeah, guess, but... there's too much security now. Come on. Yeah, like no no one legit <laughs> security, not what they dealt with in this film. Like yeah, <laughs> real security guards. Yeah. And then in terms of like buying it, I guess if uh, if I wanted like a whole section of like French film. Yeah. Uh, the 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 cover of this this movie is is really cool so i think it's like i think it's something that you can kind of choose from a shelf and you're like whoa what, like what is this like it's like a silhouette of a gun and like a mm. red circle and stuff so it's really cool so then it's like it just opens the door for that conversation like oh like it's it's this kind of cool french heist movie that that is fairly long <laughs> but <laughs> but it's pretty interesting to watch and stuff so i think that's like what what I can sell it on and stuff. And whether or not I'm going to buy it, it's probably because of the cover, the, mm. the box art. I'll just buy you a poster. You'll be all right. You don't want to yeah, buy the whole true. thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on Amazon, buy the poster. You'll be all right. I was like, what's cheaper, the movie or the poster? <laughs> <laughs> that honestly might be the same price. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but, but yeah, any last, uh, last words? No, not for this one. I normally have something, but not for this one. I, yeah, I'm excited for the last two movies that we got yeah. coming up. So yeah, I think that's we'll see what happens with those. Yeah. <laughs> the totally like just don't come, don't don't live up to our expectation. I guess. Oh, I don't even say that. I think they'll be good. I think they'll be good. Yeah. Okay. I got my I'm fingers like crossed, forward, especially for this <laughs> next one and everything. But we'll yeah. leave it to that. But uh, but yeah, you wanna you wanna take us out? Yeah, thanks for joining us for another episode of Saturday Night Popcorn. I'm Kai. And I'm Jason, and we'll be back next week for another one.